as soon as I saw this guitar, I was like, I can't believe these guys want to sell it to me for $500. So I managed to still talk them down to $400. And then all of a sudden they said, I'll tell you what, you did such a great job. Why don't you take this guitar home with you? And I said, no, I will give you $100. And then that's what we settled on. True story. I'm prophesying over this event. And have you got the level ready? Perfect. So I'm just, I'm just, fa I'm just fantasizing right now. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, this guitar pretty much caught my eye the second I walked in here. It's the uh, 68 uh, Super 400 uh, Gibson uh, Mill Travis guitar. It's got a very unique uh, Bigsby here. It kind of looks like a cloak hanger. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's um, it helps with the that, that effect there. But uh, yeah, I, rem I remember just checking out some of the old videos on YouTube with Mill Travis playing this and yeah, it's kind of really cool you get to play this here. It's uh, great for the um, boom chick style. Yeah, so I'm from a small town in, in Wales in the UK called Cumbran. And yeah, this, this music isn't really played there, but um, I'm very grateful. I, I have a father who is very influenced by Americana music and, and bluegrass and folk music. So I was basically raised on, on that style of music. My, my dad was a huge Tony Rice fan, Doc Rotson, Clarence White. So that was being played a lot in the house. Um, he also loved like Leo Kotke as well. But um, it was him who kind of discovered Tommy Emmanuel and then introduced me to that. But, you know, like my mum loves, uh, you know, like R&B music and, and all time Motown music. And uh, my brother influenced me on a lot of the scene music as well. And I've been going to church all my life. So I've got like hymns and gospel stuff. So I, I think I got a, a wide appreciation for all different genres. But uh, and then. I think well, what I loved about discovering Chet Atkins, he played like everything in that finger style um, t technique. So uh, being able to incorporate that into your own playing, I think has been a huge advantage for me and is part of the charm that lured, lured me in. So yeah, the, the first time I ever heard Chet play was... Uh Mr. Sandman and that just charmed charmed me with everything that I had to offer so
Yeah, well, obviously, uh, Mill Travis created that style, what we know today as uh, Travis picking. A lot of people have it kind of confused where they just think it's like a alternative, like a finger picking, but it's actually uh, created by using a thumb pick on the right thumb and you're really driving down on the, the, the muted string. So. so that's being created by a thumb and usually your, your hand would be uh, down on the, on, on the body of the guitar. And uh, some people think it's individual picking too. But you kind of want to go to town on the guitar here. Sometimes you're even getting that aggressive, you're getting that high E string as well. Obviously, playing through a, a fine amp, it's going to really come through. Um, but also when you've got the lead lines that played with the index finger and index finger only, that's how Travis got those sounds. Uh, and uh, the advantage of having that index finger as well, you kind of had these brush up sounds. So that's kind of how you achieve those sounds. Yeah, the, the classic Mill Travis tune, it's the, the Mill Travis anthem, is a cannonball rag, which uh, goes like this. Yeah, um, the first guitar I ever had was an SG uh, Ibanez when I was like 13, but I barely played it. I was basically just doing... I was doing stuff like that and throwing the guitar around my, my neck and catching it. That's all I wanted to do as a guitar player. But then I saw Tommy Emmanuel when I was 14 for the first time, and that just completely inspired me. And then I looked into who he considered his mentors, which was Chet Atkins, Jerry Reed, and he even talked about Mill Travis on the stage too. So that got my curiosity. I ended up getting a best of Chet Atkins record where it had everybody on it, um, or special guest artists and stuff. And one of them was, uh, it had um, him playing Mill Travis, uh, Chet Atkins and Mill Travis playing um, I'll See You In My Dreams. And yeah, I just fell in love with this style of music completely. Uh, that self accompaniment uh, finger style where your thumb is playing the rhythm and, and the bass and your, your fingers are playing the, the melody. So that just opened up a, a whole new world for me. And then that was it, the, the rest is history. I'm still trying to learn how to play it. Uh, when I first started, I was going to a lot of clinics. Like um, I was a part of a, a guitar club called the Isloin Acoustic Guitar Club in, in South Wales, not far from where I lived. And yeah, like we would bring in artists, um, uh, a lot of folk artists as well that would talk about guitar in and their style. And then, you know, whenever Tommy Emmanuel was in town, I would be going to see him and uh, I went to a Tommy Fest in Windsor at some point, and and he he did like a like a three hour workshop, which was incredible. But I think with the technology of having uh, videos at the time, Stefan Grossman's workshop, I was getting a lot of uh, those Buster B Jones tutorial videos, and yeah. But, but I was also doing the same thing. Like uh, I was very inspired by everybody also talking about, oh, we back in the day, we used to have the records and slow them down. So I figured I wanted that authentic feeling too. So I was going to like charity shops and record stores and trying to find whatever I could, whether it was like a Chet Atkins record or Jerry Reed. And I, I would also try and slow it down the same way. Um, but like today it's incredible. You got like YouTube where like the slow down functions, like I'm, that's what I'm using these days. And and uh, to, to help learn these songs. Mm -hmm. 